So now that we have a train model, it's important to test our model. I want to see, before we get it out in production, how well is it working now? Here's a sample response object format. You're going to get a JSON object when you run inference with a RoboFlow hosted API. This is helpful for pushing your results to something like a server. And here we are, and looking at all of the different code snippets that we have. And we'll start out by running an example with Python. I've linked this notebook for you as well. That way you can get started with my example and all you'll have to do is put in your own information for your API key and your model endpoint and your model version and also the image you want to run your tests on. Because well, if you're not running a chess model, you don't want to use my chess images. So as you bear with me here while I fill out this notebook, we're adding these snippets here so that you see how to run the inference as multi-part form with base64 and how to run the inference on both a hosted image somewhere on the internet or a local image from your own computer or your collab environment. So as you see here, you'll need to change things like your model ID, your model version number, but also your API key. So now I'm showing you how to grab that information from the download code from your data set. As you see, you can find the model version number in multiple places. Then your API key here, Remember again, I'm showing you my API key in this example, but again, do not share your private API key with anyone else beyond your team, as this gives them the ability to run inference directly on your project with your credentials or uploading images to your projects with your credentials. If you're going to share any key out publicly, it can only be your publishable public key. So we see the image we have here. I'm also going to drop the image down below. That way you see how to run inference with both multi-part form and with a base64 encoded image. So I'm just going to copy the model ID down to the base64 version, as well as the model version number. This way you can see all of the correct places to add this information. Yeah, yeah, sometimes fumble around with the mouse a little bit, but you get the point. And here we are with our API key. And our image will be referenced within the API call as we've already set the value for the image. So now you see our response is 200, meaning that it worked. And we also get our prediction in that expected JSON format. One thing we've recently added is another part to the JSON object image, so you get both the width and the height of the image that you sent in for inference. So as you see here, I get a white pawn is what my inference said that this image was. And the confidence level of 60. But when we bring it in, we see that that was not a white pawn. So that tells me that we definitely have some work to do on this data set. This is where something like active learning would come in, which is available with our upload API. And here we are running inference with our Python package. Our Python package is very flexible and can be used with the upload API as well as the inference API 
And you can also use it to download your images programmatically in any format that RoboFlow has available. This way, if you'd like to train a custom model on your own or get annotations in different formats, you're able to do so. Now, just know when you're running this code in Colab, you might have some dependency issues. And whenever that happens, you just need to be sure to restart runtime. And as you see here, some of the methods that you can use to get some more information about your current project. So again, I do know all this information is freely available in the documentation, but I'd like to show you as well, just in case you have issues finding some of the information like your model ID or your model version number, or you may accidentally fill in a field incorrectly and not get the inference result that you were expecting. So as you see down here, you can do inference on an image that is hosted somewhere on the internet or on one of your servers somewhere else in your production environment. Additionally, you can also use this method to just run inference on an image that's on the local device or a video frame or feed coming in from the local device. So here we put in our project ID or model ID. Here we also have our workspace ID. If we want to make sure we're very explicit with the model that we're trying to access in the workspace that we're accessing. And at the bottom where you see prediction.save with the output path, that is the image name that we're going to have for the predicted image. But we want to just be sure that we add the path to the image that we want to run our prediction on. And as you see here, multiple places to find the version that you're running your inference on. So we'll be using version one. I got the code from version two, but the inference will only work from version one because only version one was trained with RoboFlow train. Version two has not yet been trained. And we run that inference and we get our output. There we are drawn for us and this is the same image that we would be able to save for our records. And thank you for watching. That is how you use the RoboFlow hosted API and code snippets for our Python package.